More than 4,700 businesses have benefited from the Comcast RISE program. One year ago, RISE was created with the commitment to supporting underrepresented businesses across the country. And we're just getting started. Keep rising. Welcome to Sisters Inc., our podcast for and about women business owners, brought to you by Black Enterprise. I'm your host, Elisa Gums. Black women are the fastest growing group of entrepreneurs in America. And on every episode of Sisters Inc., we'll sit down with one successful CEO and share how she slays the challenges of being a Black woman in business. Today's episode is all about finding success selling seasonal products. We're chatting with Danielle Hodge, the founder and creative director of Alma Ocean, the first Black-owned, female-led startup designing patent-pending, culturally-inspired pool floats and other water accessories. Welcome to Sisters Inc., Danielle, and thanks so much for sitting down with us. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Danielle, your professional background is in marketing and entertainment, talent booking to be specific. How on earth did you come to start a company centered around pool inflatables? I know, it's so random, right? Um, great question. So let's see. Um, I will say a major key uh, to me, you know, coming about with On the Ocean was 2020. I think a lot of us had the time to be still and kind of figure out what our pivot is going to be, um, figure out what we're going to do next. And then for me, coming from, you know, the event industry, all events were pretty much shut down. You know, you know, the experiential part um, of being able to be around crowds and um, have events was just kind of like at end. And so my pivot was really for me actually sitting in this very spot I'm in, which is my mom's dining room. Um, and kind of looking out at the pool, which um, my mom's been in this house for over like 35 years. So um, we were fortunate enough to have a pool growing up. And it came from a mix of, you know, all the protesting going on in 2020 and people trying to figure out what they're going to do. And Black businesses having an opportunity to kind of be louder and have a voice and be seen. And um, it was a simple search on the internet simple search of me just looking for inflatables, um, looking for one to go in the pool and then realizing like, why the heck are there not enough black people in this space? You know, like, why aren't we in the advertising um, of pool inflatables? Why aren't we on the products for uh, water accessories? Why aren't we, you know, when you're going and looking for stuff online, you're not seeing a lot of black people when it comes to swimming. Yet we are the statistic that's so high and drowning, you know? So um, those two things kind of clicked, which was like me not seeing myself and me realizing the statistics are just constantly, we're always saying black people are the, you know, the, the highest percentage of drowning. So how do we change that? And I didn't think it was pool inflatables that would change it. I felt it was me bringing more uplifting to the water space. Again, me not seeing anyone looking like me me feeling like um, selling pool inflatables, it would be a disservice if I wasn't finding a way to lift up my community at the same time. So that's where I started like looking for um, black swim coaches, or I found a community called Black Girls Surf. I started realizing like there is a community, like um, there's a space for us in the water place, but a lot of us just don't know about it. So I just felt having like a product and then connecting and merging and blending with uh, people in the same space would help. One of the things that I love about your story is that like many black women entrepreneurs specifically, you created the solution that you were looking for, for yourself. Um, and even today, when you Google pool float, I, none of the women look like us. So yeah. what does it mean to you to be able to bring representation to this industry and to literally change that picture of what people see when they Google pool float. The feeling is indescribable because I, just the patterns alone speak. 
So like I'm looking for when I'm designing and creating, I'm looking for bold patterns that like if you or me were to walk down an aisle, it's going to catch us and be like, oh, shoot. OK, the Kente pattern is kind of what I started with. Um, a lot of people are into now the head wraps, um, outfits that have Kente on it. And I thought I'd never seen that on a float, you know, but we love those patterns. Those patterns are beautiful. They speak to us. Uh, I'm going to start with that. So I think um, the first time I got my inflatable, a sample sent to me and I blew it up and I went in the pool and I laid on it, I was like, I made this for us. Like that feeling was like, un it's just kind of indescribable. I can't really, I felt really exactly what I wanted other people to feel was uplifted. I felt um, like I made this product, I made this brand for other black women like me, for my community. And yeah, the feeling just indescribable. It really is. When I think about pool floats over the last few years, there are certain ones that immediately come to mind. They've gone viral so much that they're like ubiquitous now. First the unicorn, then the <laughs> swan and the flamingo. I personally was obsessed with the mermaid tail one summer, like oh, yeah. five years ago. Um, so what has it been like for you as a small business competing with these floats that have taken over social media? Yeah, I think the thing is, I have to remember that I'm a solo entrepreneur. I have to take baby steps. So the designs that I have uh, in mind are going to eventually expand. I have so many, like I have a mermaid tail too, but you'll be able to tell it's for us by us. <laughs> you know, like I have, um, I have a, right now I have a, like behind me, I have my Rasta unicorn drink holder. So like, instead of the traditional, you know, unicorn, I've got the Rasta unicorn. Um, so I brought like a little bit of the Caribbean aspect into it. My nephew, actually, my 15 year old nephew, he designed this one for me. Um, and so, yeah, I just think, I think that those other competitors or those other floats are there, but they're not me. Like, they're just, are they coming with that piece of connecting with the community that's deserving of, of you know, being in this space and a, a connecting with a community that also um, needs the help, you know? So I think that I don't really try to compare myself to them because I'm, I'm on a whole nother lane than the other pool inflatables. Um, and I think that, I think that I'm, I've just got to take the baby steps to eventually, as I grow, bring out all those other styles that I have, because those, not to knock the flamingo and the unicorn, but sometimes you want something new. Yeah. You know, you, you know, you want something that's eye catching, whether it's Instagram worthy or something you could just be proud of even though it's just an accessory, you know, to some people. Um, yeah, so I think that uh, for me, I, I see them, but hey, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm out here too. <laughs> even though there are parts of the U.S. where swimming is year round, pool accessories are really a seasonal business in terms of the marketing push, the press coverage, um, the sales numbers. Did you have any trepidation before you launched about starting a company based on seasonal products? I didn't because I knew other people were doing it. So I never put myself in a place where I don't feel like, I just don't feel like I was ever incapable of, of taking this product that's seasonal. I knew there were other products out there doing it already. So um, I just had to pave my own way. And then also I think adding other things, not just making it you know, um, about pool inflatables and water accessories, there's merch. Um, I have hoodies and I have um, coffee coffee mugs and I've got travel bags. And I think as the, um, again, as the brand continues to grow, I'll keep adding things that I like that I feel like other people um, might like as well. And then there's the aspect of traveling, you know, is although we're in, um, I'm in Florida where it's mostly hot, like all year round. You know, there's other people who will go on trips. Um, maybe they want to pa pack their, their Rasta unicorn drink holder. Maybe they want to take their float with them. Um, and then you have to think about the other states that are hot all year round. So I never really like limited myself with, even though it's a seasonal product to me, I felt there's always a pivot to it and more things that I could always add. And I think, that's what I'm saying, I think. But <laughs> as the brand grows, 
I will continue to create more content. And I think having a lot of content um, while it's downtime, like the down season, um, whether it's on YouTube, creating a YouTube channel, or on my own website, just keep educating people about water safety. It's something that I can also continue to do on the off season. So yeah, there's just, there's ways around it. And there was, I always felt like there was always, um, there was always something for me to keep the brand afloat. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, how many times have you used that one? <laughs> Not that much, honestly, not that much. But when it when it flows, you got to take the you got to take know, it right. Got to take the rhymes, yeah. <laughs> so you just segued into my next question perfectly because you mentioned some of these. Um, um, but were they like an intentional strategy that you had to boost your counter season sales, or were these things that you discovered as you started out that you needed to add on some year round products? I started just thinking I can do pool inflatables. And then when you get on the phone with that friend, I got on the, friend, on the phone with my friend from high school um, and his name is Michael. And he was like, stop playing D. You know, you need to have some other things in there. Like you can't just be pool inflatables. Like you're going to need to add some other things. He's like, what are things that you like? And I was like, candles, um, bags. And he's like, put those in your store. Like, but you know, have your twist on it, um, your style, whatever it is that you like. And then, you know, you'll have other things to keep going you know, on the off season. So when I first started, I was just all pool inflatables. That's it. And helping people learn how to swim. And he was like, nah, you need to do a little bit more. So I was like, okay. <laughs> so yeah. That's a good friend. When the conversation starts with stop playing, <laughs> you know, you're getting yep. like the real talk from them. Stop playing. Yeah. <laughs> you got the idea for Alma Ocean in 2020. So I know you haven't had very long yet to understand what the seasonal flow might look like for you and your business. But yeah. can you share with us what you've learned so far about both the pros and the cons of selling a seasonal product? Um, so the pros I would say are when the season hits is lovely. You know, um, summer's a beautiful season, I think, to, to rock with when you have a product because there's just so much you could do. Um, I even let people know like the pools, yeah, you could fill them with water, but then you can do a movie night you know, and put some, you know, blank outdoor movie night, um, put some blankets and pillows in there with the screen outside, you can make it into a ball pit, you know, so there's, there's, a, there's some ways to pivot to make it like an all year round product. Um, so it's beautiful when I can hit summer and hit it hard. Of course, the cons are when things will be slow when it's cold, and I can't be pushing a pool inflatable people will be like, you know, I don't need that right now. So then that's where I have to just get smart with thinking about the following summer and as well, just thinking about the cities and states that I can hit in the off season and just, again, content, 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 because everybody's sitting there scrolling on their phone. So however I can, you know, um, find ways to create cool content. I almost want to be the, I don't know if I'm, you know, tooting my horn too hard, but I kind of want to be a storyteller, somewhat how Nike is so powerful with their storytelling, kind of do that with the inflatables and do that with people's swim stories, um, people who don't know how to swim, you know, get in and deep dive, <laughs> no pun intended again, deep dive about like their, their experiences swimming and if they know how to or when they learned. Um, so yeah, so there's the pros and cons are just me having that downtime when it's, when it's off as any seasonal brand would have, you know, how am I going to make that money and how am I going to stay relevant, you know? Yeah, that's a con. I don't think it's tooting like your own horn at all. I think content is a really smart strategy when you think about yeah. the the areas that you play in, when you think about what makes people decide that they want a pool float at all or like a particular pool. I just had a family vacation with like all of my first cousins. We rented a vacation house in Orlando and I was like, oh, I got to go get some pool floats. And my parents are like, we have pool floats here to take. And I was like, no, 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 no. I need cute pool flows. Because I'm in Orlando. I'm part of Orlando. <laughs> they are. We'll talk about that afterwards. But yeah, okay, they're, all right. they're in yeah. Orlando. Um, and so That's cool. when you talk about what makes people want to have these, you know, to build a backyard oasis, to have great travel photos or anything at all involving travel, yeah. it's all about the storytelling and the discovery on social media yeah. and the content. So 
um, you know, I think you're on the right path with that. Um, I want to share some stats for the audience. The global pool float market last year was an $837 million business. Um, So it's a sizable market and it's really hot right now because it's been lifted by the rise of outdoor activities that started with the pandemic. Um, As a businesswoman, as things start returning, quote unquote, to normal, um, have you thought about how you're going to future proof the business, so to speak, um, or how you'll weather the tides, pun intended? (laughs) (laughs) Um, Hey, let's say this, like, what is going to be the new normal? Because is it going to be people feeling more comfortable at home now? You know, and that's just a thing. Cause I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of people who were like, Oh, I'm stuck at home. And they were like, wait, but this is kind of nice. You know, like how can I work from home <laughs> forever? <laughs> you know? So yeah, forever. Uh, and so, um, you know, I just think that it's one of those, it's one of those brands and one of those, those products that you can probably take, the box and go to a cookout and bring your, you know, inflatable box, the pool to a cookout with your friends just to make more of an experience um, in the backyard. I don't know about you, but I'm one of those people that like when I go somewhere, I got to bring something to make it like cool and fun. Um, Especially here in Florida, I am one of those people who are going to like my friends, you know, her house and they have a lake or um if i am going on a vacation i am that one that's bringing the one weird thing that i like i tag along or whatever um so you know i just i feel like people are creating that experience more of having more intimate settings now monkey pox out there goodness gracious what's next i don't know but you know we're we're creating these environments that are now um more intimate settings and so i think my product fits right in with that You said in a previous interview that the business is very scalable. So I know you've got some big plans. What can you share with us about where you want to take the business? I want to take on the ocean to, I want to go to basically, man, this is a tough one. Kind of not really, but I feel like I, I want to see more people swimming. I want to see more Black people swimming. I want to see more Black females in particular swimming. Um, I would say like a lot of, you know, over the pandemic, I would notice, and I would even write, I was like so inbox happy during the pandemic, like reaching out to these swim coaches, reaching out to a lot of Black females who were influencers traveling. And I would actually ask them, do you know how to swim? And a lot of them would say no. And a lot of them were like in Tulum, in the water, getting shots. But I'm like, dang, like, sis really doesn't know how to swim. And I'm not knocking her. I want to help her. You know, I want to help her get the right um, tools to do that. But I also think the fear that's instilled with a lot of people who don't know how to swim, it's not making it fun for them. So it's almost like a nuisance to go to try to take a swim lesson. And so I think with Alma Ocean making it, fun, making it a thing to do, making it something that you're actually going to put your money towards if it's a swim lesson um, versus, I don't know, maybe you hold off on the bag for a minute that you want to get or hold off on the heels and just put a little money towards something that could save your life. You know, I want to push that and I want to um, encourage that. Also for a lot of Black women, they're a little worried about their hair. So I feel like they're a lot worried about their hair. (laughs) Very worried about their hair. They're very worried. I will change that sentence again. We are a lot worried about our hair. (laughs) Black women are very worried about their hair situation when they get out the pool. And so I feel like reminding them about all the amazing hair products that are out there now. There's so many. Um, educating them on how to use a swim cap, which your hair will still get wet, but it maintains it better versus you just hopping in and just letting it get all over the place. Um, And the products they can use, you know, for their hair, just educating women on that and letting them know it's okay, you know, is something that's, that's, um, that I want to encourage more because that feeling, I don't know about you, which by the way, do you know how to swim? I do. I do know how to swim. I also grew up with a pool in my backyard, despite the fact that I grew up in Brooklyn. Nobody ever believes it, but it's true. Oh, wow. Wow. That's dope. (laughs) That's really dope. 
Yeah. So just like, you know, being able to submerge yourself fully in water is an experience that a lot of Black females have not had because, you know, they're always keeping their head above the water. So just um, that's something I want to push more and encourage more, um, you know, through my brand. So the company is really about promoting swimming in our community first and the product yes. second. Yes. Yes. Um, the product, I th and again, like, Yes, I'm coming out the product, but um, as I grow, I can do more, be more active um, with the people I've connected with over the pandemic. Um, Noelle Singleton is the CEO of Afro Swimmers, and her and I have become like the best friends um, just from me sliding in her DM over the pandemic. And she's just always educating me on the things that I need to know as far as swimming and what I need to learn and just... Um, her and I are just going to do so much more. And so I think just connecting with more swim coaches, because me, I can swim. Um, I'm a strong swimmer, but there's also some techniques that I didn't, I never learned, you know, um, that I think I'd want to learn too, just, you know, to have another hobby or something to learn on the side, you know, so. So before we go, Danielle, I want to talk about your community impact. You've already told us about um, the resources that you're sharing to promote swimming the community yes. that you're curating around that and how you really, you know, reached out to these people to make sure mm -hmm. that you can highlight them and use your platform to get everyone to know more about them. Um, you're also, though, working with artists from our community for your designs. Can you tell us about that? I am working with artists. Um, so with my pool designs, with them, um, on my beach towel, I have uh, a beach towel, it's called Africat, and it's got a cheetah in the shape of Africa and the artist, um, you know, that was his whole theme was to have Africa as a cat. And I thought that was pretty cool and unique. And it's something that he was never using. And I thought, hey, can I get the rights for this? And let's collab. And then, you know, you break bread, I break bread, but your art gets to float. And he was like, yeah, let's do it. So I thought, why don't I do this with, with a bunch of artists? So if anybody is um, if you're an artist out there and you're looking to have your art float or if you're um, super creative with your designs, um, reach out to me because I think it's I think it's great to uplift the art community now. The art community, I feel like, also was pretty loud as well during um, 2020. You know, a lot of people were getting to um, take time to focus on their art. And so a lot of people were reposting a lot of artists. I don't know if you noticed that in their work. So... Um, yeah, just getting their, their, doing collabs with them and getting their awesome designs on my inflatables is something that I want to include in all my ocean. And the last thing I want to mention in terms of your impact is that you also have a focus on sustainability. Um, you even include links on your site for how customers can upcycle their inflatables when their pool days are over. And, you know, I consider myself pretty eco-conscious, but I have literally never thought about what happens to pool floats when we're done with them. So I thought that was so cool. Man, I wish I would have had it right here to show it's in the bathroom. But I have like, I have this, I'm a huge, I don't know about you, but I'm a huge fan of toiletry bags because I travel a lot. And um, again, sliding through DMs uh, on Instagram during the pandemic, I ran into this woman who she takes old pool inflatables and remakes them into bags, purses, toiletry bags, which are my favorite. Uh, you name it. There's a couple other things she's done, like keychains and everything. And I thought when people have pool inflatables, they don't even think to where do you put them after? You know, you just go and throw it away. But I think knowing about these artists who are taking pool inflatables and reusing them almost for like a forever product, because instead of you know, throwing out your pool inflatable, that material is getting reused. You use that bag, you don't want any more, you give it to your niece or something like that. It's going to be passed down um, and reused versus you just getting rid of it. Um, so that was something I, I, there was actually a guy too, I was trying to get him to make like a skirt or something with the leftover inflatable, but that material can be used for so many, like so many things after versus you just like folding it up and letting it get moldy, you know, when it's all wet after. Who would have thought? So as I grow, as the business grows, I hope I can put more um, plans into place to make it so when people are done with their inflatables, they can um, reuse them. But in the meantime, knowing about upcycling, I think is really cool. And knowing that you could actually take this material and reuse it to make things is um, 
is really cool. Especially when it's got a dope print all over, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> well, thank you exactly. so much, Danielle, for sharing your small business success story. Everyone out there, please take a look at the company website, almaocean.co. That's almaocean.co, not the M. You can also follow them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Pinterest. So basically everywhere at Alma Ocean. Check out the podcast channel on blackenterprise.com to find Sister Zinc and other podcasts from Black Enterprise editors, writers, and experts. Be sure to subscribe to Sisters Inc. on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and YouTube. And if you like what you hear, show us some love by leaving a five-star review or put a sister on by spreading the word. This is Elisa Gums with Sisters Inc. for Black Enterprise. Thank you for listening. My name is Claudia Fitzwater. Project Body was open with the intention to help every woman to feel good. Right after we opened our doors, COVID shut us down. It was really disheartening. Now with the technology that Comcast Rise provided, we can reach women all around the country and the world. Apply today for a variety of business, marketing, and tech makeovers on us. Keep rising.